Hey folks, welcome or welcome back to the channel. Another episode of Match Roast with Mordecai, where I break down stages, talk tactics, and point out mistakes to help you get better at cowboy action. Today we are reviewing stages from a monthly match with the Red River Valley Cowpokes up in Albany, Oklahoma. They shoot on the second weekend of each month and on federal holidays, so be sure to check them out if you can. Otherwise, you can live vicariously through me. Here's what you missed on the range. Today, stage one is at Speedy's Corral, where we have everything staged on the table, and the gun order is rifle, pistol, shotgun. Starting with hands on the staged rifle, the pattern is a 3-4-3 sweep, starting on either end. So this should be fast. Let's see what happened. Man, I almost never bluff. Stand by. Okay, so no choice on gun order and no movement really. So the focus for this stage is how to set the table and transitions. I have chosen to place my guns in the shooting order from left to right since that's most natural for right-handed shooters and I've given myself lots of room on the left side of the table to discard. When I'm transitioning, the idea is to be picking something up and putting something down at the same time. So as soon as the rifle string ends, I start looking at my first pistol and I have a hand on it before the rifle even hits the table. After the first pistol, I roll it into my left hand and drop it straight down as I'm looking and reaching with my right hand for the second pistol. Then I roll that one and reach for the shotgun. Now, I could have put the pistols on the left side of the rifle to start, but I would have had to cross over them when discarding the rifle rather than go straight down. I don't think I lost much time turning while presenting the pistols, but if I was doing this again, I might try adding a step to my right as I'm discarding the rifle to line up the pistols in between my body and the targets. Unfortunately, I missed a pistol shot in there somewhere. It's difficult to walk into a stage like this cold because you want to go fast, but you have to aim during the fast stages too, or they turn into not-so-fast stages. Anyway, now that we got that clean match business out of the way, stage two is at Gene's Mercantile, where we have rifle on the left table, shotgun on the far right table, and pistols holstered in the middle. The gun order is rifle, shotgun, pistol, and we are starting at the rifle with hands on the table. The pattern is a 3-3-3-1 sweep, so pretty straightforward. Let's see how it went. Got up, Adele? Stand by. Okay, so starting with the rifle stage on the crate here, we want to make sure we have it pointing at the first target, which is the far left one for me. I like to have my hands relaxed with my fingertips touching the platform, and my hands are positioned close to where they would be gripping the rifle. So I'm leaned over the rifle, looking at the trigger guard when the timer goes off. I seem to have some hitching in my rifle today, which may or not have been because I'm terrible about cleaning it. Uh, it almost cost me a miss, but fortunately either the target or the bullet was just big enough to save me from that 5 second bonus. So clean your guns, kids. I think the big thing for me on this stage was this transition from the shotgun to the pistols. I would have liked to have started taking that step sooner, but it went pretty well for never having done it before. You can't move with a hammer cocked over a live round in this sport, so you do need to be deliberate when you're taking steps like this to make sure you're not violating any rules. Anyway, feeling a little better about a 1790 on this stage, so let's go ahead and move on. Stage 3 is at Stormy Stage Lines, starting with the rifle on the right table, pistols in the middle, and shotgun on the left table. Gun order is rifle, pistol, shotgun, and starting at low surrender. The pattern is two identical 2-1-2 two, two sweeps, starting on either end. Sounds easy enough. Let's see how it went. <laughs> you thought that was fast? Stand by. Okay, so not much you can do with the pattern or gun order here since it's all defined in the instructions, so the focus of this stage is moving left. If you're a southpaw, you don't have any excuses, but if you're right-handed like the majority of shooters and you run cross-draw holsters like me, this can take some extra thought. So of course, I had to seize this opportunity to try a reverse cross-draw transition on the clock. Now the point behind this is that if you're right-handed and turn to the left, you can't draw your cross-draw pistol without sweeping the crowd, which is a super big no-no for what I hope is obvious reasons. 
So instead, you draw your strong side pistol first, and then you pull the cross draw pistol before putting the empty pistol back in the cross draw holster. Now, alternatively, I could have discarded the rifle with my left hand and drawn the cross draw pistol before I started to move, which is a solid way to approach turning left if you're a cross draw shooter. The downside is that you have to make the transition before you move, and by doing a right hand discard with my rifle and then drawing the strong side pistol first, I was able to do all that stuff on the fly. So I was betting that doing a slightly longer transition while moving would be faster than doing a quicker transition static. Regardless, I think it looks super cool, and that's half the point of doing this, right? And an 1820 is a solid time, so let's move on. Stage 4 was at the watering hole, where we have pistols in the left doorway, rifle in the left window, and shotgun in the center window. The order is pistol, rifle, shotgun, and it looks like we're splitting the shotgun, two from the center window and two from the right window. The pistol and rifle pattern is a 2-3-2-3 two, three, two, three sweep starting on either end. Sounds easy enough. Let's see what happened. Come on! Give me some credit! Damn boy! One nine four two with one. Okay, so I decided to start on the bottom right target so that I could be moving up instead of down when doing my sweep. Anytime you have stacked targets like this, you want to try to shoot them from the bottom to the top so that you can see the next target. If you start at the top, the next target is usually covered by the gun or your arms or whatever, and you're more likely to over undershoot. Unfortunately for me, this advice does not help when you don't have a good grip on your pistol and let that second shot of a double tap fly off into the ground. I also managed to short stroke the lever and jack out the first rifle round, so that was embarrassing. I prefer over-the-top reloads because your natural instinct is to open the lever, and then you can slam the lever closed without having to fit your fingers back into place. I've seen fast shooters go through the gate too, but I've gotten enough practice with the over-the-top reloads that they feel pretty solid. So now the trick is to stop jacking rounds out in the first place. One thing I was happy with on this stage was the super fast follow-up shots on the shotgun. I did finally find some low recoil loads, and I've also played around with some reloads, so it's made a huge difference. Stage 5 is at the HTH Saloon, where we have everything staged on the bar again. Order is rifle, pistol, shotgun, and starting with the rifle in hands. Looks like this is a round count stage, so you must put three shots on each target in the first row, four shots on each target in the second row, and three shots on the back target. So nothing really splits in a pleasing manner here, so feel free to take a minute and think about it. Or don't. I'm not your mom. Here's how I did it. Well, shouldn't be too hard. Stand by. Okay, so target order is clearly the focus here. We want to shoot the first row with the pistols since they're the closest, which leaves targets 1, 2, and 3 for the rifle. Now, if you did the math, you might notice that targets 1 through 3 need 11 shots, and there are only 10 in the rifle, so we have to shoot one of them with a pistol. I like shooting left to right, so I'll start with target number 4 on the pistols and end on 6, so that means target 3 is the closest for the final pistol shot. Going back to the rifle, I decided to shoot target 2, then 1, then 3. Now I know I just said on the last stage that you should start at the bottom and work up, but since these targets aren't stacked directly on top of each other, I can still see target 3 pretty clearly while aiming at target 1. It was much more comfortable to sweep in a line and easier for me to remember. Anyway, the point is, round count stages like this can be super funky, so don't be afraid to roll it around in your head for a while or watch some other people go first. It's better to be sure you can keep the pattern straight in your head so you don't get a penalty. Alrighty, dang, final stage already? My, how time flies when you're watching a video. Stage 6 was at Panhandle Slim's Railhead, where we are starting in the middle doorway with the pistols, rifle on a shelf to the left, and shotgun on a table to the right. Starting with your hands at your sides, the instructions are double tap sweep all three targets and then dump four on any target. Sounds great! Let's see how it went. You could have missed me! Stand by! Well, man, this is yeah. 
1650 Dang it. Well, it was almost awesome. Okay, so I don't think there are any insider secrets on starting with hands at sides, but if I run into one, I'll let you know. I am focused on my first pistol grip as the timer is going off. For the pattern, it worked out to be basically a 2-2-6 sweep, so the challenge here is just to not get ahead of yourself on the rifle dump and jack a round out. I am happy that despite some earlier mishaps, I was able to get through the entire string, only to make it over to the shotgun and miss a target. I've been trying to push my shotgun splits, and here I wasn't quite on target, so one was left standing. The cherry on top was having them not seat all the way somehow, so the whole fiasco cost me about three and a half seconds, turning a 1601 into a 1956. I guess the moral here is you need to stay focused until the end, and don't get sloppy with your shotgun, or it'll cost you. Anyway, not a super great way to end the match, but always something to learn, so let's see how the final scores turned out. So my final time over six stages came out to 1.11.30, which is still pretty good considering the misses and bobbles I was struggling with today. I do have a goal of less than 100 seconds this year, so hopefully I can get my act together. I think that's all I got for today. Big thanks to the Toma family for hosting, holding the camera, and feeding us afterwards. I always enjoy coming out to y'all's range, so keep up the good work. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more, be sure to check out my other roast videos, and of course, hit the like and subscribe button so other people see it too. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all on the range.